Shukla Namaste. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for having me be here. I am really grateful to each and every one of you for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Suma. Thank you, each and every one of you, and thank you, Life Positive, because a major part of my journey began after I was at one of the Life Positive expos. Now, uh, as uh, Suma has introduced me, uh, well, let me just give you a little background. I uh, am right now living in Ludhiana. I've been there for 15 years. Major part of my education has been in Pune and Mumbai and Delhi. My husband was in the army, so we've been traveling a lot. Uh, I have been uh, practicing Vipassana meditation for the past 30 years. And uh, there, has been, uh, there have been highs and lows in this journey. I got married at the age of 17, did major part of my education after I got married. I have two sons who are married, they live abroad. Uh, there were things in my life which I could not understand, which had an impact on my health, which I understand now. I did not understand then. So uh, there was a doctor who just suggested Vipassana to me. I was in Nasik, so I went to Igalpuri. I knew nothing about meditation, about anything. But I'm a person who is willing to surrender. So I took a word and I went for Vipassana. I was at this Vipassana course where when I entered, they said you need a, a registration before, but divine guidance, I was taken in and I sat for Vipassana. And life has never been the same ever since. I was asthmatic when I went for Vipassana. Uh, in my times, we didn't have so many of those inhalers. We would take put, I was put on oxygen very often. It was monsoon and I had, fortunately, I had a doctor who was the teacher. And she was from Pune, she's no more now, and she told me I've been very brave to come for a course in the monsoons. So to cut the whole thing short, the first two days was Anapan, that's a part of Vipassana. And finally, when they gave, uh, Goenkaji gave Vipassana, uh, uh, whenever I came to this part, there was stuff which would well up. And I kept getting these attacks of asthma during the process. I couldn't sit through. And they were wonderful, very gentle, very kind to me. And they kept telling me to take the next one. And I kept saying, I want to go home. And by the end of it, in any case, I sat through the 10 days of Vipassana. And what is so amazing is at that point I did not know. But there is a lot of stuff that came up for me. I did not know what was happening to me. I am not saying to you that I do not want any of you to think that the same thing would happen to you when you do a Vipassana course because each one is unique and very uh, personal to each person. But there was stuff which came up for me, big time, which I did not understand. And as it is silence, I really had nobody to tell me what was happening to me. And I had no background on meditation. But being the way I am, I carried on uh, practicing Vipassana and I realized that I never got an attack of asthma ever again. That was the last attack I got. But there was a lot of stuff that I saw about my life. I saw the need in my consciousness which was wanting me to get the attacks of asthma. I needed attention. It was attention seeking. It was childhood, some things which were coming up for me. Because each time I got an attack of asthma, everybody's life around me came to a standstill. And I loved it. I lapped it all up. And when I was stressed out, I would bring myself on to an attack of asthma, this is only something that I realized later, after doing, being through the entire process. And, uh, well, that was not the end. Then I carried on with life. Of course, I was not the same when I came back. I had a lot of complaints. I had a lot of blame for a lot of people. I thought my life was completely messed out. And when I went for the Vipassana course, I, I looked behind at everybody and said that you guys think I'm going to come back, but I'm going to disappear from the face of the earth. But actually, I came back. Everybody was the same. I had altered. And that is what I saw, the power of looking within, connecting with the divinity that resides within us. You know, what Vipassana gave me was the ability to connect within myself, to be able to look at who I am, to be able to realize that there is greater power that resides within us, and how I could connect with that power to give me 
who I am and what I am today. That's not been the end. It'll just take another two minutes. Uh, I um, began leading seminars. I became, uh, I mean, I was with Landmark Education. I became the center manager for Punjab. I was leading, I was a seminar leader, training the trainers, and I was doing all of that, and I got an ischemic attack while leading one of the seminars. And Vipassana saw me through that again. It was surprising how, uh, I mean, it was, it was a nasty attack, I would say, at that point of time. I came, went to sleep. My husband didn't wake me up thinking I was tired because Landmark Education courses finished at midnight. So he just thought I was resting. When 10 o'clock, when he, I wouldn't get up, I was awake, but I couldn't say anything to him. And he realized I wasn't well. I went to the doctor and they diagnosed whatever. But the practice of meditation saw me through this completely within a week's time. I'm sharing this with you because I know I'm talking from experience what meditation can do, really. Did you do this years back? Uh, medit Vipassana I did 30 years back. And that's the time I, I let go of asthma. Ischemic attack was about 10 years back. So, uh, yes, yes, definitely. Uh, one hour in the morning and in the evening. And also I've been very lucky to have had, uh, uh, you know, a personal uh, counseling with Goen Kaji. I've been very, very fortunate. And what Monji was saying the other day, that when you meet an uh, enlightened master, you really don't know and it blanks out. Well, that's exactly what happened to me when I had a personal meeting with him. I really don't remember half the things that he said to me. I only remember him saying Beti to me. I went to him with issues because I really don't know. And I was walking here and I was guided to lie down and I felt that the bed was down and I was here. I don't know what it's called. Now I know what it's called. Then I didn't know what it is. But I have been through that experience. I'm sorry, and I didn't get to earlier. Who suggested you should do Vipassana? Doctor. There was a doctor, uh, an army doctor, who suggested the first time, and I just listened because I was asthmatic. So, yeah, yeah so they suggested it to me, and I, and I willingly went. But for me, I went because I wanted a break in my life for 10 days. <laughs> 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 to tell you frankly. And I want to get, yeah, and uh, to get back to what it is, I mean, that was not the end of the challenges in my life after the ice cream. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, well, uh, then as I went along and uh, I, uh, I was diagnosed for abnormal cells of the breast and I was going through low grade fever and things like that. Nothing much, but my life was going on just the way it was, was perfectly fine. We, I consulted a lot of doctors in Ludhiana and my son was in Singapore. So my husband and myself, we went to Singapore. I went through tests and they asked me to undergo surgery. So they were both sides, which is, some, which is very rare, they say. So they, they, it was both sides and then they said I need to undergo surgery and I said, okay, if it is surgery, uh, you know, there was something which went up when they said surgery because in Vipassana, Goenkuji tells us, you know, I mean, if you cut yourself up, there's a circuit and I'm really, I said, oh, no, what are they going to do to me? So uh, they said they would do one side, and after three months or six months, they would do the other side. I said, why you do both? They said, no, it's very painful because we've got to drain stuff out, so it would have to be one at a time. That meant I would be in bed for almost one year. And here I had walked into the hospital absolutely fine with just a little fever. So I said, for one year, that means I'm going to be laid up in bed from tomorrow onwards, probably. And they said, yes. So I said, then. If I don't do the surgery, they say we cannot guarantee anything. Well, for that, for me, that was again the turning point because I said, you cannot guarantee anything even after one year. So why do I need to go through this process tomorrow or the day after? I, if I could have gone past an ischemic attack, if I have gone past asthma, well, I'll try other things out as well. And against, very much against my family's wishes, but they supported me in everything. I tried on alternate medicine. The first thing that I also tried on was I knew that I had a lot of forgiveness to do. There was a lot of resentment within me. And here I would like to say that disease is not hereditary. Our beliefs are hereditary. 
You know, we do carry the belief systems, the belief patterns. Our thinking habitual patterns is what gives us who we are today. And I needed to break those patterns. There was a belief. There was a lot of resentment inside of me which had resided and I knew I needed to let go, but I really didn't know where it was coming from. I uh, went, got in touch with the Helio Life and uh, well, I did the Helio Life workshop, I went abroad, I trained, I did a forgiveness workshop, a complete retreat for 10 days. I was puking every day through the forgiveness workshop. Every day in the workshop for 10 days I was throwing up because I could not digest the stuff that I had stored inside of me. But I promise you that was my healing. And then I went and trained to become a Healy Life teacher. I went and expressed my gratitude to Louise Hay. I have met her. Her book is like the Bible for me today. And I lead those workshops. Yeah, I've got two more minutes. Thank you. Heal your life. I'll show it to you. Her first, yeah, by Louis L. Hay, Hay House. And her first book is a little blue book, which costs 150 rupees. But it is a wonderful book to have, because which teaches us that our thinking patterns. There's a movie also. There's a movie also. And we say that it's only a thought, and a thought can be changed. So it's a thought which gives us a feeling. Like, well, I'm sitting here, or you meet somebody. You see somebody, there's a thought, and then there's a feeling, and then there's a sensation, and then there's this emotion, either it's of love or whatever comes up for us. And then that emotion gives us our behavior, and our behaviors give us our attitudes. Now I'm a life coach, and I'm a corporate coach as well, and I do a lot of one-to-one -one work. I love this work. I call myself a teacher of love. And... I wish we could give this to all schools and institutions so that we could prevent and use these tools and actually make way in our lives. And definitely, I have taken Ayurvedic medicine. I have used homeopathic. I really don't know what has worked for me, if you ask me. But I'm sure my meditation, the forgiveness, has worked for me. Because forgiveness and love walk hand in hand. And when we forgive, we drop off a lot of burdens. It's the greatest gift that we can give to ourselves, and that is what I've given. Thank you so much.